Welcome back to the Jatai Academy. I'm Russell Mays, Director of Content for Jatai, and today we're going to be doing a throwback to the 50s with the ducktail haircut. So we're going to start with a straight back section from the center of the recession that splits off the top of the head from the bottom of the head. And we're going to use our Osaka scissor because I will tend to take a larger section so a little fatter blade and a sharper blade will make it easier to cut. I'm going to take an angled section that's going to follow the front hairline and cut that down at whatever my desired length is. I want a little bit of length so that the hair flows back. This haircut tends to look better with the hair that has a little bit of movement to it. So I'm walking my guide, which means each section I take, I'm combing into the previous section and cutting that as my guide. So I cut the first section, I comb section one and two together to make section two. I comb section two and three together to make section three. I comb section three and four together and so on until I reach the mastoid, which is that bone right behind the ear. Now here you'll see me take the same section, the same angle and everything, all the way down to the nape. And I will comb this into the previously cut section. Now at this point, I can either leave it a little longer in the nape or I can taper it in. I'm choosing to taper this in slightly so most of my ducktail is going to be a little higher up. You're still going to get it all the way through the center, which, you know, the, the ducktail is where everything is combed to the center and then right down the middle of the back of the head, it's combed straight down. So I'm taking parallel sections as I work through the back of the head and I'm combing that to the previously cut section. Now you can see here how I'm tapering that down slightly but I'm still combing everything all the way over to where that mastoid is on the right side of the head behind the ear. I'll comb it back and check and start seeing how I build up a little bit of length and I want this length to build up as it's going towards the center of the head. So I'm taking parallel sections at the ear, combing everything to the ear, all the way down to the nape. Just being very, very methodical with each section that I take, with each section that I cut. I want to keep it as consistent as possible. You know, and the Osaka scissor tends to be uh, nice, sharp. It's got a good blade length on it, so it gives me a little bit of uh, power behind each scissor stroke so I can cut more hair. As you see here, I'm taking everything from the center of the head, pulling it over right behind the ear, and cutting that on top of my previously cut guides. Slightly tapering it a little bit as I get to the nape, but still leaving that length build up in the center of the back of the head. Now let's go through and look at it, see how we're shaping up. We can see I'm getting that length in the center of the back. Now let's go through and cross check. I'm going to start right on top of the ear. And since I cut this initially vertically, I'm going to go through and cross check horizontally. Be sure to follow us on your favorite social media at Jatai Feather. We've got Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, and even TikTok. Now, after I finish cross-checking the sides there, we're going to go through and take a horizontal section to the initial parting that I had. Now I'm going to take all the hair on top and pull over to my previously cut sections underneath. I'm holding this horizontally straight up from the head, using my guide in the back as the shortest piece to make sure I blend in the back. So I'm disconnecting it underneath as I get to the front of the hairline. Whatever that front bang length is, that's the length I'm cutting it to. I could leave it longer or I could leave it shorter. It's really up to your preference on how you want the top of the hair to look. I'm going for a little bit of a pomp look, so I want the front to be a little longer than it is in the crown. Now here you can really see how I'm blending the top into the back of the head. And then just following my guide underneath, being methodical, point cutting that through so I have less worries about building up too much weight and it's going to blend a little bit easier. I want to keep the top really soft, textured, point cutted 
as opposed to going through and cutting it blunt, then it's, it's much harder to blend that way and I have to be far more precise. So keep following each section until I get all the way over to the center. Make sure that's cut. Now let's go through and taper it in right over the ear just a little bit more. So I'm going to go through scissor over comb, shorter at the uh, parting right there, shorter at the, the sideburn, and then tapering that up and just slowly working that up until I get that blended. Now I'm going to go through in the back I'm just going to take a horizontal section right across the bottom and I'm going to cut that length that I built up from pulling it over to the side of the head off because I want this to be square in the back. Some people will leave it longer and allow that ducktail to flip out. I'm going to keep it much cleaner and more tapered into the back. After I get everything done there, I'm going to go through do exactly the same thing on the other side. After I do the other side, I'm going to come back and take a center section right in the back of the head. This section I'm going to go through and create a completely new guide. I'm going to hold it out and cut this vertically following the head shape going up the back of the head. By leaving the center in the back shorter, that allows that length buildup from the sides to comb over and separate from the center of the back and gives it that really distinctive duck tail look. I'll check it. I think it needs to be a little bit shorter, so I'm going to take it a little bit shorter. But I'm just going to go through very systematically, cut the center of the back out. Now I'll start combing this down, check it out, see how it combs over. I think it needs to be a little bit wider, so I'm going to take and extend that a little bit to the right and a little bit to the left. So I'll start with a small section in the center, about an inch wide, see how the hair combs over it. If I need a little bit more width to be undercut in the center of the back of the head, then I'll expand that section and take a little bit more. This is just purely going to be based upon visually how you want that to look from combing the hair on the sides over the center and seeing how that falls. That's looking pretty good. I'm getting that separation right through there. So I'll do the same thing on the other side, extend that a little bit to make sure I have an even amount of width in the back of the head. Give us a thumbs up, click subscribe, and click the notification bell to be notified of future Jatai video content. Now here you can see I'm broadening the width on the left side of the head so it matches the right side of the head. Check that out, see how that's looking, that's looking pretty good. Now let's move on to the top of the head. Now since I've already cut the top by pulling it to the left and to the right to make sure it blends with the left and the right and the undercut, I'm just going to go through and hold everything up right in the center, take a center section from my length in the front I'm going to cut that down so it gets a little shorter towards the crown so that the emphasis of the length is right around the front and then it starts to blend as it goes to the back. Now because I pulled everything over to the left and to the right, most of the length is going to be in the center of the top of the head. So by cutting this first section, I will have very little hair that reaches on either side. So it's mainly I have to cut the center of the top out so that it blends like I want it to. I'll just check here, make sure both sides are even, pulling everything to the center, following my center cut guide to make sure that that has a nice pleasing silhouette from the side profile. After we do this, let's blow it dry and take a look at it. I'll just use a vent brush and blow dry everything in kind of a pompadour style and make sure everything gets blown back into the center, blowing each side into the center. Now we're going to take our Jatai Tokyo thinning scissors and go through and just blend where I did a little scissor over comb underneath there to make sure that's nice and soft and smooth through there. A little bit in the nape as well, just to keep everything soft. I'm not going to go through and do the whole thing, just right where I want it to taper a little bit more. Now we're going to go through and put a little bit of pomade on it just to get some separation right there in the front. We're going to pleat 
that front kind of pompadour to make it look a little more lived in and a little less Conway Twitty, <laughs> which is what this haircut really reminds me of. But this will keep it a little bit more modern and, and cooler and give it a little bit more of a distinctive look around the front. Overall, I think everything looks pretty good. I think we got a nice pleasing shape. The silhouette is really important when you're doing these pompadour type styles to have a good silhouette from a profile. And we're looking pretty good through there. Nice and tapered. You can see how it's being combed into the center. Then the center is being combed straight down. So we got a nice little DA in the back. Check out the Jatai Academy. There's all kinds of great information on there to make you a better hairstylist. Let us know what you'd like to see in the future. And we will catch you next time. Thank you so much for watching.